Picture this, single cell RNA sequencing, but you also grab the information of the protein on the cell surface. So that's SciSig for you. So SciSig actually stands for Cellular Indexing of Transcriptome and Epitome by Sequencing. It is more like an evolution of single cell RNA-seq, but you also add another layer of information on the top. So for those that are new here, epitope is a region of the protein that can bind to an antibody. So epi, outside, tope, spot, or location. So first mentioned in 2017, it is one of those multi-model analysis methods that try to integrate phenotypic information into the analysis. So one of the main issues with single cell rna is how you're going to identify the clusters, right? Most pipeline today uses the gene expression pattern to separate one cell type from another. And because we're sequencing so many different genes, dimensional reduction tools such as PCA, TSNI, and UMAP or autoencoders are being used for the clustering process. So the problem with that is that the number of cluster you can find is almost always an estimate. So many times two different cells can express such similar way, it is hard to tell whether we have 12 cell type or 13. So we could use biomarkers to tell them apart, but that requires you to know about your sample and the cell period to doing any kind of sequencing or analysis, right? So this is where SciSig can actually be very useful. So using DNA barcoded antibodies to convert detection of proteins into quantitative sequenceable readable. So how it works is that when a cell are being tagged during the droplet encapsulation process, it's also being added with this antibody, right? The antibody stick to the cell and then you wash the liquid. So the antibody that actually stays with the cell after the washing state can then be picked up by the sequencing stage. So imagine you have all the normal transcript readout from your normal RNA sequencing, but you have another unique transcript that you know it's coming from the antibody they just added in. So the good thing about it, besides being able to identify the cluster, uh, is that you are able to understand what protein are being expressed outside the cell, right? For example, you can have many copies of a transcript of a glucose receptor, but if those proteins are not being transported into the cell surface, they're essentially non-functioning. So even though they're being expressed, it's hard to know whether they actually make a difference physiologically to the cell. So lastly, there are a few examples of SciSig in real life and what has been done in other research. So in this paper, they try to understand how SciSig allow them to see uh, cancer immune evasion. And this paper described how it predicts the survival of critical COVID-19 patients. Well, we have this amazing journal called Blood which uses SiteSig on the T-cell in multiple myeloma patients. And lastly, we have this that uses SiteSig on chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So if you don't already realize that most of the study doesn't have a specific goal in the title or specific thing they have discovered, right? It's because just like most of the big data profiling, uh, SiteSig and SCRNA-Sig doesn't give you one thing that you can focus on it gives you a large amount of path to work on after this, right? Whether it is through mutation, mining, tools development, uh, there's more work to be done before you can actually confirm or validate any kind of finding that you have. So in summary, SiteStick actually stands for Cellular Indexing of Transcriptome and Epitome by Sequencing. It's basically single cell RNA sequ sequencing, but you also grab the information of the protein on the cell surface and add them to your analysis. That's basically all I want to say today. I want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video where I'll try to actually run a walkthrough on how you can run a multi-model analysis in Surat using a site data. Bye!